Hi folks, thanks as always for joining and for uh, your support, especially the patrons over at patreon.com. Um, if you want to have a look over there, just have a look at the descriptions, the links in the descriptions below. Um, I painted this, now this is, uh, I think it's called the Dingle. So if you imagine, um, right over here is Cuckoo's Nook where I've done a few paintings of. And then it's like a big horseshoe, it brings you out along here onto the main road here. By the uh, by, the garden centre. We like to have a nice. Uh, they do like a nice fry up in the garden centre, just round there. It's only a fibre, but let me show you the photograph I've used for this one. So I took this only two or three weeks ago, um, dull day, so there's no shadow. So I've had to make the shadows up like a, a lot of the time. But nice little scene. Got our path sort of winds its way past the figures into the distance there framed by the big trees there and a few like this hedgerow here. So let me show you the, uh, the materials I've used. So the, the colours, we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. They're all uh, just cotton and watercolours I used. The brushes, large on Ransom Ake and then just a couple of little riggers. Number three, then just a, a tiny little one. Quickly show me book before we start. What colour paint made simple? This is volume three. Loads of step by step photographic guides to take you through each painting. There's a uh, nine in there. There's eight of them of the paintings that you can have a go at. So that's on Amazon. Hardback, softback, Kindle. I'm going to stop it from crinkling. It's only £130 the paper, just by putting a little bit of clear water over it. Then I'm going to go up into the sky area, just have a little bit of clean up raw sienna, it's a bit dirty. Give the raw sienna a bit of a clean, and then take a touch of alizarin and a bit of raw sienna. Something like that. Clean the brush. And then I'm looking at a bit of ultramarine up in the sky area. I'm going to take a bit of Payne's grey as well. Always try and have more than one colour on the brush. You get all little variations and subtle differences in the colours and tones and things. So there you go, from predominantly Payne's grey to more ultramarine as it comes down. And then what I like to do often is take the brush, give it a clean, take the excess off on the tea towel and then just lighten it at the bottom because it get nice cloud effects but also what I put along the line there, the horizon line, will just show up better. Put a bit of that colour down the bottom. And we've got a quick dry. I'm just going to see all the airs are all over the place. I'm just going to dip them into the into the water jar just to bring them all back together and see just a simple way of bringing all your hairs back together. Then I'm going into the same colours and I want to put some trees on the horizon. But they're quite far away. Um, I'm not going to do exactly like the photograph. I've got a simple line there, and then there's just the odd one that's just popping its head up. I might even just take the little, little brush there, little rigger brush. Just pick up a bit of that colour there, and just have a the odd little. Tree trunk and bare thing. It is autumn, so a lot of the leaves have started to come off. So I'm just doing bare branches and things. That's just a little bit of detail there. It doesn't have to be anything special. Just enough to keep the viewer interested. I'm going to clean the brush again. 
And I'm going to go a bit of, a bit of raw sienna again, a little bit of lemon yellow in there. Let's just pop a bit of, a bit of green down there. But I'm just going to try and vary it as well as I'm coming down. A bit more variation than that. It's not a lot of a bit of ultramarine in there. Back into the, into the raw sienna. Back into the lemon yellow. And the path. Leave a bit of space for the path. See, sometimes I like to have. If you put like ultramarine on the one side and lemon yellow on the other end. I mean, they just sort of blend together on the paper, and they also turn turn the brush over as well. Just always trying to look for different ways of getting different effects and things into the raw sienna. Quick sweep there, like that. Bit of ultramarine. Just bash it in. And I'm going to clean the brush. It's fancy some. Uh, see if we go. If I just take say a little bit of red, let's just bang that in. Just a bit of variation. But it's quite diluted so it hasn't come on very strong. I can always go back into that lemon yellow again just to bring it back to what it was like. I'm just filling in some of these white gaps. Um, Uh, just got a few more little trees up there. Pop those in like that. Clean the brush. I want to get back to a lighter colour. I'll take the excess off on the lip, take the rest off on the tea towel. Into lemon yellow. Um, I might put the path in in a minute just so I can, I've got something to work up to. Let's put the path in. So I know what I'm, what I'm dealing with. So, sort of muddy, muddy path, but I often like, so I like a bit of, bit of brown, bit of red, bit of blue. I'm just mixing them together randomly on the brush. It's gonna just straighten up the hairs a bit. And it sort of just sort of winds its way around there. And then just sweeps right into the foreground like that. Right, let's clean the brush. Excess on the tea towel. Back into that lemon yellow. A little bit of raw sienna as well. And I'm just pushing it. Pushing this path. Pushing this land right up to the edge of the path. Same on the other side. And then I'll start putting in a few trees and things in the middle ground. A bit of raw sienna in there. A bit in the middle of the path as well. A bit of lemon yellow. A bit of water on the bottom of the paper. Just soak that up. Right, and the paper's stretched a little bit, so I'm just gonna... I just noticed a bit of water there in the skies. Stop that from doing anything nasty. So I'm just going to pull it tight and just refix it against this 9mm piece of plywood I got leaning against my easel, and then I'll be good to go again. So I just pull that tight, reclip it, reclip it. Now there's, there's some uh, big trees, so I'm not going to bother cleaning the brush. So I want those colours anyway. So I'm just going to mix a few greens together. Oh no, a bit darker. I'm going to take a bit of red as well, I think. Let's see what that is, just over the top. I'm switching to my number three rigger brush. Plenty of water, bit of brown. Bit of blue, bit of yellow, and I can see a tree, it's just a tree sort of around the back. I mean, so much just growing around there, pick a few twigs and branches up there. A 
few around the other way, just make it a bit more tree shaped. Oh, so that's just something just hiding behind the tree. Let's just paint that in front of it so it's obvious. And a few things growing in there. I'm just using a fingernail, just scrape them up. And then coming forward, a bit of raw sienna, a bit of burnt umber. And I'm just, just popping these in like that. Now over on this side, there is like this big, got like a big hedge thing here, didn't I? So um, I'm just wondering how best to approach this. I might just. Let's try the hake, and there's like a, just a few, I can just see a few little, it's like a really thick hedge type of thing. I'm just going to start it off. Start it off with the eye brush, and I'll, I'll switch to the, the rigger brush in a minute. Something like that, back into those same two colours. And I'm just going to start a whole load of twigs and things now growing up there. A few down the bottom. Continue with some of these. And they're giving off all over the place. Just keep reloading the brush, lots of paint, lots of water. They're going somewhere, ultimately about there, I think. A few more things growing around here. directions these are going in. There is like a tree in the background there but I've, I've just I've only just noticed that it's too late to put it in now. I can't put it in now put all these twigs and branches and things all this growth. I'm just gonna just keep going with the rigger for a bit. That one's a little bit darker. Maybe get a few more of them a little bit darker. Just a contrast against that light area of the sky. Quite a nice contrast there. Which is all I'm doing is keep reloading the brush, brown and blue. Just do a little bit of dry brushwork just to finish it off. Right, let's just clean the brush. Back to the hake brush. I'm just squeezing the water out into the jar, just out of camera shot. And I'm going to take the rest off with the tea towel. That's all I'm doing. I'm just sort of squeezing the brush between the uh, tea towel like that, just to get it nice and dry. Then just scuff it up like that. So it's just dry hairs all over the place. And then I'm just going to go into those same colours again, all our hedge colours. that head in a little bit. Don't want to go too too much. A few little darker bits. 
brown, blue, a few darker pieces down the base. Bit of fingernail there, just scrape them in. Grasses and things growing. Now the brush is really dry, so the paint's going on pretty thick. I don't want to, I want to be able to see the background through it, but I want to make it look like a hedge. Also, I'll just a few things going around here as well. I'll put a little bit of rigor work in a, in a second with this on this side. I'll do for now, I think. Actually, let's just do it now. So again, brown, blue. I'm just flicking up just little bits there. So I did a few with my nail as well. I can hardly see those distant trees now. I might just pop them in again, actually. Tell you what, let's just let's use this rigger brush. I'm gonna add a few trees. I think I'm wrong one. I want the smaller one because these are quite far away. So I don't want big thick branches and trunks. I'm quite thin. What I should do really is dry that, but I'm, I'm just gonna go straight in. Or something like that. So I'm just gonna. Pop the trunks in first, and I'm just dry brush some leaves and things on them. Now they're quite equally spaced, so I'm just going to put one in there just to stop that symmetry, which always looks horrible. Um, now rather than dry the brush and do it properly because it's a little bit too wet. I'm just going to take it off on the on the tissue, and then what's left, I can just make sure it's not too th too much. Little dibs and dabs on the ground, just a lot, a little, add a little bit of, sort of texture on the ground in the distance. There's hardly any paint on the brush now, so I know I can get away with it. A few little things down here as well, anywhere I want really. Just little bits of things, you know, little, little mud patches and things on the on the track. Right, let's get the figures in. So the one, I'm just going to do one in red, I think, just so that it stands out. Um, sort of something like that. And switch to a bit of blue. That hasn't come out great. It's too, it's too short. I need to do it a little bit bigger. I think there's too much water on the brush. A little 
little bit longer. That's it. And then the other, another figure right next to them. I'm laying them out slightly different to what they are in the photograph, and also the things we walk in the other way. That's it. One big one, one small one. Um, I haven't done the other shadows yet, so I should have done these afterwards actually. There's no shadows in the in the photograph, so I'm not gonna well they always look better with them in. So let's just pop those shadows in. I mean, I've got I'm gonna put a few shadows in from the trees, the bushes. Brown, red, blue, it's a mix of shadowy colour. I should have done the shadow from this mix with those for those, but I just didn't have the patience. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with a, a few little shadows at the base, I think, just to darken it up a little bit. And then same, they've got to obviously come in the same direction as that. So I'm just bringing them away from the hedges, something like that. A few shadows in there, in there. little things happening on the land over there. Quick dry. Actually these need to be eyed at night because of these uh a few more darks on the trees so again I want to take a lot of that excess water off clean the brush and I'm going to go into a bit of that brown a bit of red a bit of blue I haven't got much water on the brush I just want to Pine's grain there as well. Let me get some darker bits amongst these. Again, a few more darks there. You see where that blue comes in handy? Always works quite well as a dark. So I think I'll just pause it then for a second. I just did a quick repair job on this. The, the figure was all wrong. Um, that's all I've done while, I, while the camera was off. Um, so I, I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. Maybe put a little little bird in, up in the sky. Just take a bit of colour. Um, pop him up there and then I'm just going to stick my nine down in the bottom somewhere. 
And then we'll just down there in the corner. Oops, hang on, it's too dry. And I'm going to call that one finished. So let's stick a mount on it and see what it looks like. So there's our finished painting. And you can see down there where I was working from, the photograph. So I've kept the main sort of elements in the same sort of place. Um, figures are a little bit smaller. I've done them sort of going and going the other way, I think, as well. Um, I'm quite pleased how this turned out really, because I think in the past I'd have just blocked it all in and made a complete mess of it. Where well, this time I've sort of took my time and just put the individual um, sort of trunks in, only sort of narrow, hedgy type things, they're not big, massive trees. So you can see, you can still see the background behind them. Um, obviously, there's no, there's no shadows as usual. It's a dull day. It generally is in the UK, um, so I've had to invent the shadow. I think rather than not put them in, I'd, I've always put them in because they always make the painting look more interesting with shadows. Um, because this was a, sometimes I'll leave the path a little bit lighter than that so the shadows stand up even better it was a little bit slightly too pale so that's why I went in afterwards then just to pop these darkers, darker sections in a lot of ultramarine in there I often, often find that works pretty well so it's just started off with that simple sky um, there's a bit of raw sienna, like pinky sort of glow up here, a bit of um, lizard and crimson and raw sienna. Then it was um, ultramarine and Payne's grey. And then I took out the horizon line with a dry brush, tracked these sort of clouds, also helped these distant sort of trees and bushes show up better. Um, now those distant ones were meant to be this one here, so I put these two on in again, because you, you could hardly see it. Um, if you look at the photograph, you can see they're quite prominent there. So I'll pop those in as well, use the, the little height brush and then a few little dark tones there, get a bit of interest, a bit of texture on that grass. As, you, as I was saying before, you can see plenty of that field behind these uh, nearby hedges. Lots of dark tones there, sort of path sort of snakes its way, always look better when they sort of snake the way around. A few more darks and flicks of the rigger brush and flicks of the nail as well amongst them and again got some more trees and bushes on this left hand side framing this path as it works its way, winds its way through the earth, through the scene. Slight error, if you can see, I, I should have, I said in the commentary, I've done the, the slightly darker in tone, you see the shadows there compared to these shadows, I should have waited until I put these shadows in and then put the shadows in there, so they're not quite the same tone but I'm going to pretend I didn't notice that. That's my quick impression of the of a nice little scene. So I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for watching. Um, many thanks. All your support, especially the patrons over at patreon.com. You'll see all the links in the description for the books and the paintings. So keep practicing. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And I'll see you all again soon.